Torch Studio is a machine learning studio embedding a PyTorch environment. It aims to minimize code as much as possible and provide real-time visual feedback at each step of the process. Let's see how to train our first model. The first step you see when you launch Torch Studio is called Dataset. That's where you can load, tune and visualize your dataset. We'll start by loading the MNIST dataset, which you can find in the Torch Vision category. NIST is a well-known dataset composed of handwritten digits and their corresponding interpretation. Don't worry about the parameters for now. All you have to do is click the Load button. Torch Studio is pre-configured to automatically download and split the dataset accordingly. Once the dataset is loaded, you can change the number of samples used for training and validation. Usually, the majority of samples are used for training and a minority for validation, as they will only be used to evaluate the accuracy of the training. Some statistics about the dataset are displayed here, and as you can see, each of the 10 digits represents about 10% of the dataset samples, which is very well balanced. The sample panel allows you to navigate and visualize each sample of the dataset. Once a dataset is loaded, all the tabs at the top are unlocked, and we can define our first model. Torch Studio provides a MNIST classifier model that you can directly use as is. All you have to do is select it and click Build to visualize it. The graph panel will show you the nodes inside the model and how they are connected, starting from the input samples at the top down to the output predictions at the bottom. Don't worry about the hyper parameters for now and click Train to start training the model. As the training progress, you should see the loss curve decrease and the accuracy curve increase. That's a sign that your model is properly learning from the dataset. You can also see the predictions here from the validation dataset. These are examples that a model never saw during training, and they are now used to check that it makes the correct predictions. Once you're good with the performance of your model, you can save it by clicking Save and reuse it externally. Now let's see how to customize parameters in patch pre-trained models. For this second example, we're going to use the C410 dataset, which can also be found in the Torch Vision category. Click Load to load the dataset. The C410 dataset contains pictures from 10 categories, or classes, of animals and vehicles. However, the pictures from this dataset have a resolution of 32 pixels, as you can see here, which won't work with the model we're going to use. So we need to resize the pictures to 64 pixels. Edit the transform parameter by adding transforms.resize64 right before the final transform and click load again. Now the pictures are properly sized. To speed up training, let's reduce sample usage to 20%. This won't be as accurate as using the whole dataset, but enough for this demo. Let's create a new model tab and select the Mobile Net V2 model from the Torch Vision category. Click Build to visualize the graph. When you check the end of the graph, you'll see we have an issue here. By default, Mobile Net and most Torch Vision models are predefined to predict 1000 classes, while our C410 dataset only provides 10 classes of pictures. Fortunately, the Mobile Net model lets us customize the number of classes, so we can type 10 here and rebuild the model. Let's check again the end of the graph to make sure we now have a model that predicts 10 classes. Now if I start training right away, I will quickly run into a loss error. That's because this classifier model doesn't handle with an activation node, like our MNIST classifier. Activation nodes are displayed in red in the graph display. Many models from the Torch Vision category don't provide this final activation node, but we can fix that in the Hyper Parameters panel by choosing a last function which does the activation. Instead of cross entropy, let's select lax of max cross entropy. Now we can start the training. As the training progress, we'll see how to reuse the pre-trained model. Several models from the Torch Vision category comes with pre-trained presets, which allows the models to train faster and more easily, as they have already seen thousands of examples before we start training them on our own examples. When you choose a model from the list, the generic models come first, and then the presets. Notice that so far we've been using the MobileNet generic model, starting with an uppercase M. Let's select the MobileNet preset instead, starting with a lowercase M. Make sure to set pre-trained to true and click Build. 
the pre-trained data will be automatically downloaded if necessary. Now remember we also need to set the number of classes, and this preset doesn't have a parameter for that. So we need to patch the model code directly. First, let's have a look at the final node, which is the linear node. Hovering it with the mouse reveals details about it. The more important here is the node's name. It's called classifier.1, which means the classifier node at index 1. Now let's reveal our model code by checking show code. Right after the model is created and right before it is returned to Torch Studio, let's add a new line. We need to replace the model classifier node at index 1 with a neural network block of type linear, which takes 1280 values and returns 10 values. Let's build our pre-trained model again. Now we have the right number of classes and we can start training. Let's go back to our first untrained mobile net model and see how training has progressed there. See how it starts with a high loss and low accuracy. Let's stop the training here and go to the pre-trained mobile net model. See how the training starts. The loss is much lower and the accuracy much higher already. That's thanks to the pre-trained data. So far we've seen how to load and train pre-made datasets and models. Let's see a real use case example now. I've been working on a rare audio issue where the audio samples were corrupted in a regular pattern. 8 good audio samples followed by 8 bad audio samples. To fix the problem and recover the original audio, I created a dataset of audio samples I corrupted in a similar way. So my training inputs are the samples are corrupted, and the training outputs are the original samples. This way I expect my model to learn how to reconstruct source samples from corrupted ones. I had to write a custom PyTorch dataset module to load these samples. You can either click open or just drag and drop Python files into Torch Studio. As I didn't write any annotation for this module, Torch Studio directly switched to the source code view. Let's click load. Here you can see the corrupted audio samples, and here the original audio samples. I'm going to use one of those generic but highly customizable models provided by Torch Studio, a one-dimensional unit. Units are segmentation models. They predict as many samples as they are given, so it's well suited for our problem here. However, when you're faced with a new problem in machine learning, it can be tricky to determine what are the right parameters for the model and the right hyperparameters for training. So we're going to define some basic settings first, and then create multiple copies of the model with some variations of parameters and hyperparameters to see what works best. Once we've defined enough variations, we can start training them. In the training panel, I'm going to uncheck queued, so that all trainings run in parallel. And while the training progress, we're going to display the Project Overview tab, which is the very first tab of Torch Studio. In this tab, we can see all our models at once and how they compare to each other in terms of loss and accuracy. Each model tab has its own color, and that same color is displayed in the list here and for the plots at the top. It's much easier this way to eliminate bad models or bad hyperparameters and focus the research on the right set of values. This concludes our introduction to Torch Studio. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.